This demonstration is to show my students and anyone else who is training in some kind of academic process that you won't always need all the tools for every drawing you do. If every drawing we do had to start off with the same level of scrutiny that we had when we're first learning or at the height of our training, we'd only have a few pieces to show and we would not be industry proficient if we wanted to work in entertainment. With this drawing, I'm not stressing exactness. I'm looking for a strong, clear, big read. Nuances can be addressed at any time, as long as the big picture works. I'm starting the design with minimal measuring and just a few shapes representing the head, neck, and a part of the shoulders. Enough for me to rapid measure by eye if the big proportions are working or not with just the big shapes. If the likeness is close here, we've solved a huge part of the big picture problem. While I know some of the measurements are off, I'm not stressing over them. I've taken mental note of them and will address them over time. I'm using a charcoal pencil and working on cheap stock of newsprint paper. Yeah, I know, newsprint paper. Partly not to get locked up on quality drawing because of quality product when I'm just trying to warm up. And there is something magical about the tooth of smooth newsprint that I just can't find in any other paper product. It is definitely a love-hate relationship and a battle with these tools. I've eliminated any measuring lines and I'm relying strictly on my eyes. This is a really good practice, practicing the tools on autopilot. It helps build confidence in a totally new way. The tools we learn obviously bring loads of confidence. They help keep us going, for sure. Practicing without those tools, without all the measuring, the typical and the usual, trusting all our practice and execution of finishes have helped ingrain good working habits and quality reflexes, will actually allow ourselves to let go of everything and just create. Totally different level of confidence, and a good one to get to. I'm using the shadow patterns and the heavier, darker halftone shapes to start the block in. I get the edges of the forms blocked out along the terminator lines, little shape by little shape at a time, where each of these shapes are running into one another. To assemble the larger shadow patterns together, I then block them in as flat as I can, making sure to fill in the shapes with the same value that I've outlined them with, making a complete flat pattern. To distribute and distinguish the larger patterns of light and darkness across the pictorial matrix, comparing the values lightness and darkness to one another in the measure known as notan. If the light looks strong enough to mirror the original source light, the next stage of the drawing can be added, or the gradation stage. Already, you can see that while I've abandoned the usual start, the buildup falls back into a usual buildup. So I'm not really totally abandoning the academic toolbox. I didn't intend to leave the other eye developed for so long, and honestly, I should have brought it up sooner. No pun intended, but it became a literal blind spot that I feel threw off a few of my internal measurements of the cheeks and the muzzle, which I'll continue to adjust up to the end of the drawing. The reference is a soft indirect light source with what looks like a soft fill and the bounce light from the wall behind him, which makes things challenging. Try lighting, not the usual academic direct light source. As long as I remember there's a hierarchy of power or brilliance within those light sources, I should be able to maintain the turn of the form of the skull and the neck. I did make the neck a little too long. Hard to see at first with little room to back up from the drawing where I am recording all of this, just to see the whole thing all together, which is what you should be doing when you make a drawing. The bigger the drawing, the further back you have to get. I notice it later on when I'm developing the neck and back muscles and I make adjustments to it by raising the collar line. The photo looks like it's shot with something like a 35 or a 28 millimeter lens, possibly, as it does have some photographic distortion to it. I tried to remove the distortion, but I think that might not have worked out as well as I'd like for it to have worked. But again, this is practice, and this is where I should be taking risks and trying things, when for all of us, we have no time to practice with client pieces. They're hiring us for what they know we already do, not for what we could potentially find that might not resemble anything we've done prior. For me to objectively see this drawing, fully see it and compare it to the reference, I need the shirt filled in. As much as I thought I was going to leave it linear and graphic, 
I needed the darker values to read the lighter values more accurately. I find the smaller shapes within the larger shapes by sculpting them in rather than by outline and fill. I want them to evolve out of the bigger value patterns so they don't feel cut out, separating them. I am using my fingers a lot more than I tell my students not to use them, so yes, you can use them. Just be mindful of when to use them and when not to use them. Like, if you have to back up reversing all the way back to a lighter value than what you're using, you might not be able to get back to it. At a certain point, with enough defiance of the rules you've been told, you'll know when to break them and why. These art rules are all flexible and hopefully one of you will tweak them in a more correct direction. Even the rules and tools evolve. I leave the lighter shapes bright in value until I know they have a certain quality to them that works to turn the form, then I knock them back into the drawing, lightly glazing a tone all over the piece, crossing into the darks to fully adhere everything together. If something that's supposed to stay light gets knocked back in value, bringing it back is easy to do with the kneaded eraser. And with the eraser, you can now add an interesting contour to the highlighted shapes that maybe you couldn't have done with the pencil. I reserve any visibly sharpened lines to the very end of the drawing, and I try to sharpen edges mostly with the eraser or accurately groomed cross contour cuts. I avoid the obvious lines to keep the picture atmospheric. Sometimes I might want a graphic portrait, but in this case, with the lighting the way that it is, I wanted to keep the forms turning as much as possible. I didn't mean to, but I went through four pencils in this drawing. Heavy handed me broke two, filling in the patterns, and the other two I quickly blunted with all the edge work. While I feel there's some things that could be better proportioned, I'm happy overall with this practice piece. I feel like this was a successful warm-up and I can now get to my workload. And his likeness will be useful in the character work I need to complete today. The drawing took 53 minutes in total, which to some might seem like a long warm-up. And I could agree, except that the, his likeness will be a part of the work I'm doing, so there's a lot of wiggle room here. And as a warm-up, finishing it is going to make other tasks I do much quicker to accomplish as a result. I'd also like to point out that the sitter of this photo is legendary skate photographer and writer Mickey Vukovic. I'd like to thank him for shooting a fantastic self-portrait that I hope I didn't butcher in the process of making this drawing. He is one I've wanted to make a portrait of for a really long time. So thank you very much for this image. And for the rest of you, I hope you're able to learn something. Remember, I'm not saying just toss out the tools. Just practice without the, so many of them from time to time. Not only will you learn that you know a lot more than you think you do, but that you'll also find a little more truth in the work you make, a little more you in the work. Stay creative and enjoy the level up.